All right, descriptive geometry, problem 2F, and this one we're dealing with sloping lines. So we're going to try to find our sloping lines. We're going to find rise and run, percentigrade, slope, etc. And the main thing that depends on most of our students is you're going to deal mainly with your slope, with that picture, that in grade, etc. It's going to have something to deal with, like the slope, the pitch of your roof. Most of our students, that's what they're going to be using with. Some of them may go out and work for TxDOT, and you may need to know your slope, and you may be able to find that pitch, etc. for when you're doing roadways, or you're doing dams, or bridges, etc. So you're dealing with different slopes, and how things come together, and you have to be able to find them. If you know the steps and the procedures of how to find them, it's not that hard. And a lot of it's just some basic math and some graphical math. And if you can do those, you can get this. So think of this as like a really big practical descriptive geometry is really just practical applications of geometry. How do I actually really use it in the real world? So if I was actually trying to, I would actually be like trying to find the true length of this line here on the roof. I need to know how long is that going to be because I need to know how long do we need to cut the, the piece of wood so we can start building the rafters so we can start building the roof. I need to know what's the percent of my slope here so I know how far up the grade is going, which direction it's going, and then I can start figuring out, okay, if I'm doing this, how much dirt do I need to put in, which is remove, or how much do I need to fill it in with to get, so how much do I need to cut or fill. There's different things that we would need to know, and that's where your slope comes in. So we're going to simply practice finding graphically the slope of this problem one and problem two, and then we're going to do the math to find all of that also. Okay, so we're going to do both. We're going to do graphical math. So let's start off with problem one. Problem one, we want to find the true length of this line. So this is the line we want to find the true length for. So we're going to be working off of this to get the true length line. So this is going to be where our auxiliary, where we're going to project up to get that true length. So we need an F56. To start off with, I'm going to come in here now. And since I'm finding 5-6, I know that that's my angle, so I know that this, this line that I'm fixing to draw here has to be parallel to this. That's where all that comes from, that whole parallel and perpendicular is nothing new. Stuff we've been working on when we did the other true lines. There it goes. Come on. Get my tape. Tape it down so it doesn't move. And I'm going to be having to lift the tape quite often, but that's okay pencils. Always draw it lightly. Now that I know that that's nice and lovely and parallel. Again, draw them lightly. And I'm not worried about getting them perfect. I'm just drawing them on there lightly. Let's move this up out of the way now a little bit here. Okay. All right. So next, I need to find what is my distance essentially here and here so I can transfer that up here so that I can get the true length of the line. And I do this just real quickly because I know that helps some of you be able to see it a little better. I take my divider so that from that folding line from the folding line or the edge, your edge where your frontal and horizontal meet, find my A, transfer it to here. Sorry. Distance A, number five. Distance B, point six. And I'm still drawing things kind of lightly. Actually, I'll go ahead and get a point nine and draw this line really nice and dark. I know that's what it needs to be. So it's going to be here. Now I want you to notice I'm only drawing that part dark. So that's my true length of my line. That should be the true length of 5, 6, correct? Now, we're going to do something else here. Because we're going to need this to be able to solve the math questions below. All right. So one of the things it asks for you is it wants you to find your rise and your run. You need to find the rise and the run of the object that we're dealing with. And I'm going to untape it now and move it around so you can see. So now I'm going to put it back in a nice normal view. I'm going to put my tape up here just to hold it in place temporarily. Okay. So it wants us to find the rise and the run, the rise, the run, the true length, the percent of grade, your tangent and your slope. So there's a couple things that we have to do. So I need to look at my visual and I need to figure out what is my rise and my run. 
And if I'm looking at the visual that I've given here, I'll go back and read the chapters. Uh, you can find, you can also find this when you deal with the geometry. This is, you know, the true length is, what's your hypotenuse? Where is your adjacent and your horizontal or opposite, etc. We're going to use simple rise and run because that's typically what we deal with the most. So you're going to have the run, it's going horizontal. Your rise is the distance that's coming up here. So I'm going to take my lovely, trusty engineering scale. Place it right on here and find out what is that distance. So if I look at that distance on this one, it's 1.1. 1 .1. So my rise is 1.1. My run, now here's where the mistake is often made. They're only going to measure this part of the distance. They don't measure. Notice how I brought it out because that overall distance is just your run. And again, look at your lovely little visual aids if you need those stuff to help you figure that out. Put that right on there, and according to this, is right at three. Okay, so let's do some math. Uh, all right, we could use Pythagorean theory to find the true length of line. We could do the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or in this particular case, because we've got it, we can just place that on there, and we can find out what that sucker is. We can find our true length of the line. The true length of our line here is simply 2.4. Now we start getting into some of our areas where we need to do some math. All right, so we need to find percentigrade. Percentigrade is rise over run. And this is where you will want to have your calculator. I'm just being honest with you, percentigrade. So where's my calculator? Oh, pull it out. I use my smartphone because I have a scientific calculator on it and you're going to need that later when we have to start finding out the slope because the slope requires that we find the negative 10 and that's really kind of hard to do on a normal calculator so you really want to use your good old-fashioned just regular scientific calculator. I'm going to do some basic math here. All right, so let's find percentigrade. Percentigrade is rise over run. So our rise was 1.1 divided by 3 gives us 0.36666. And then we're going to take that times 100. Use this with 3.6, well, it's roughly 3.67. And we're only going to stick to the first percentage. We're not going to worry after that. So we're going to say it's got a 36% grade. Okay? All right, now. We want to find our tangent. Our tangent is simply that rise over run, which we just did a second ago. So if we had been thinking, we wouldn't have to do this again, but that's what I get for not thinking ahead. So I know my tangent is 0 0.37. To get slope, slope, you have to use your negative tangent. Okay? We have to use the negative tangent. We have to get the theta in here. So because we're trying to find that angle, so we're trying to find the theta, we're trying to find the pitch, we're trying to find that. We're going to do negative 10. We know what our tangent is, 0.37, and it gives us with a slope of 20.30, or 20. 20% slope. Actually, 20 degrees, sorry. So it's got a 20% 20, 20 slope. And you should be able to take, if you want to double check things, a lovely little protractor. And I'm trying to show you. We can double check. If we've done it right. And we put our protractor on it. See it, how it lines up with the 20? So you know you've done it right. I just wanted to show you those two. So that's when you're like, ah, yes, I have it correct. So that's the math. I'm not going to show you how to do the math on problem two. Because it's the same as problem one. It's just you doing it. All right, congratulate. Come on, do this. You can do it.